This is Twit. 30,000 foot view. What is the problem that Linkerd is solving? The 30,000 foot view, right? Uh, I think there's uh, there are some things that you touched on that are very much true. Um, but here's the problem, right? Uh, as folks have started to decompose into microservices, uh, they've discovered that there's a fundamental building block that's missing. So I'll do a little bit of history here. I, I have sure. an operations background, um, spent a lot of time in the video game industry, spent a lot of time in finance, did a large, lot of uh, large scale system administration. And in my day, and man, maybe I'm dating myself, but maybe not, it wasn't that long ago, uh, you would have a traditional like three tier architecture, for example, right? My web server talks to my app server, talks to my database server. And you have a lot of monitoring tools at the layer three and layer four level, right? If there's a network transmission error, I'm gonna find it. Uh, if I can't connect to one of those services, I'm gonna know it. And then I can sort of triage what happened by looking at the event logs for the services that I'm con like concerned about, or maybe even doing a TCP dump between the two and seeing what's falling over, where is it going sideways. And it's pretty easy to reason about because it's the, like the service calls that are happening are relatively infrequent, or at least uh, I know where they're coming from and where they're going to. But when you take that monolith and you decompose it into hundreds of different microservices, the relationship between those services isn't always clear, and you don't always understand where those requests are coming from and going to. And so the, the level of, I guess, darkness or invisibility that we've had around uh, that layer five portion of the stack that you were talking about earlier, we've lived with it because it real, wasn't really a problem. But when you start doing microservices, you realize that not having visibility into that part of the stack really is a hindrance, right? And so here, here's my go-to example. Um, as a developer or as a platform operator, if I am making a call to a particular service, let's say I make a call to my user service, that user service might be calling six or seven other services behind the scenes to generate a user profile for me, for example. And if I make a call to the user service and it fails, all I see is, oh, the user service failed for some reason, right? But maybe behind the scenes, there was a, like an authentication service or a logging service, and that's what's actually failing, and that's where the problem is. But as a platform operator or as a developer, I wouldn't know that because all I have access to is the direct service call that I'm making. So without visibility into knowing what were all the components that you know actually had to service this request that I made, without visibility into what those response codes were, uh, without the ability to retry it, right? All I get is this thing failed and I don't know why. And so when people really start doing microservices the right way, I think something you talked about was uh, containerization. And I think early on what we saw is a lot of taking monolithic applications and putting them into a container, right? But when you actually start decomposing that into microservices, that has a way of sprawling to be more than any one developer or platform operator can easily put their arms around. So you, you have a layer of invisibility that needs to be addressed somehow. And really, I think the, the core value of the service mesh is that it gives you a way to look in there, figure out what's happening, and make that service communication a lot more resilient. So I can actually uh, address this directly because of the uh, ideas that I have. Uh, well, uh, my primary client right now is ZipRecruiter. And one of the things we've been doing is moving away from this monolithic application model into being able to create microservices. And one of the problems we've had is tracing a request end-to-end. -end. So like at the front end, we're adding an artificial um, um, uh, token so that we can look at it and the various logs are all being gathered together and trace it that way. Are you saying Linkerd solves some of this somehow? Uh, Linkerd can help, right? And so the way that Linkerd is implemented, uh, the way that most service meshes are implemented is as a series of interconnected proxies, right? Okay. And those proxies intercept traffic from your various processes, right? And just send it through this proxy layer that uh, can supply a lot of rich data about what's happening, that has a lot of hooks and integrations. Linkerd, uh, supports open tracing projects. Uh, and so if you are going down the open tracing route, right, where you write in a particular header into all of your requests, because it's all happening at the proxy layer, Linkerd can uh, track where these requests are and hand it back to your open tracing engine, uh, like Zipkin, for example, right, which can reassemble the trace band and let you know, okay, 
when you made this request, right, it hit these seven or eight services. Here's how long it took. Here's what each of them did. And you can very easily from one point see what what all of those relationships are and what was involved in in uh, processing this traffic. 